couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, looking refers, how are you doing? Welcome to another installment of the never ending finger style rhythm pattern and exercises video series here on Lick and Riff, where every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate, and advanced finger style lessons. This week it's time for another intermediate lesson, so we're gonna walk through four different awesome finger style riffs completely different from each other. One is gonna be a country folk riff. You can even take it and improvise on it. I'm gonna show you how. The second and third are taken from Leo Kotke's The Ice Fields, and it requires concentration and sensitivity, you'll see. The fourth one, I've taken Asturias and changed it into an exercise uh, that sounds kind of like Asturias mixed with Metallica. So uh, that's gonna be interesting. So first, the country folk riff. Let's start off easy. And um, it sounds something like this. And I say something like this because, as I said, you can take it and improvise on it. So I'm gonna show you the basis. Something like this. Okay, something like this. It's C, F, and G. So you start with C and you play strings three and five. Okay? Strings three and five, and then the second string. Then we have a double stop. We hammer on zero to two on the fourth string, and we pick the third string with it. Okay? And this is a double stop, where we pick two notes together. And we do it twice. Okay, this is the key to the whole rhythm pattern. So it's... Right? And then you pick the second and third strings together, but you pick it with a finger and the thumb. Because that creates a certain dynamic instead of... Okay, which is soft, you get this. Okay, which is kind of accentuated. So it's a very, very minor difference, but it makes the whole difference. So that's the first lick. Okay? And then it's uh, either the bass and the third string again, or you can pick the third and fourth strings. And then you hammer on zero to two on the fourth string, uh, harmonized with the third string again. And then you pick the second and third strings again. So it's, that's the second half of the C chord lick. So the whole thing is, okay, got it? It's kind of a harmonized arpeggio because you have, okay, we kind of arpeggiate the chord here with a hammer on in the middle. So we harmonize with, third string twice and then the second string as our harmonies so this is the C chord lick now the F chord lick is kind of the same you put on one two and three on strings two three and four you put on your pinky on three on the E string so you get an F9 chord F add nine and you do kind of the same thing with different strings so you play this uh, the third and fourth strings then the second string, and then you uh, do the same double hammer on thing, but with strings two and three. And then the E string harmonized with the B string, and you play the B string with your thumb. So you get. Okay? And then you do this. This is the change. Um, just to, um, you know, to finish it a bit differently than the previous lick. So, so you can play strings uh, two and four, or you can play strings uh, two and three, or you can play the fourth string by itself, okay, as your first note here. Uh, and then you do the hammer-on thing again, and then you take the finger off of the third string and play strings two and three on one and zero because this brings us back to C. Okay, so... Okay, then you play the C lick again, 
and then you play a G lick. Now the G lick is uh, you want to put your pinky and your third fingers on three and three on strings one and six, so you have your second and first fingers open and that makes it easier to hammer on the second finger. And you play strings three and six, then the E string, then the hammer on thing again on strings three and four, and you hammer on on the fourth string. And then strings two and three open. Okay, remember we're in the G chord, so we want a G harmony. And then, open 3rd and 4th strings, then the hammer on again, and then the 2nd and 3rd strings again. So it's... which leads us again back to C, so... Okay, now the most important thing here, for dynamic purposes, is to play the double stops with your thumb and a finger. It doesn't really matter which finger you use for the higher note, as long as you use your thumb for the lower note, the lower string, and that gives it that twangy country sound. Okay, you don't want the soft finger picking sound, you want a twangy country sound, and the thumb makes all the difference. So, I'll play it once, and then we'll talk a bit about improv, and move on to the next exercise. So. start again. Now, for improvisation purposes, you can, um, you can play the bass notes anywhere you see fit as harmonies. You can play um, any note by itself as the second note. You don't have to play the second string on the C chord. You can play, you can play the E string instead of, you can play, okay? for a different um, expression. You can also play three on the E string. Okay, the high G note. You can play three on the second string for a C at nine sound, but I think that's a bit too much. So you can play the high G note all the way because you have it in C, you have it in F at nine, you have it on G, so you can use that as kind of a pedal note thing. And you can also play the E string in your last set of notes instead of the second and first strings. Okay, add the E string at the end there. You can um, play it without double stops, you can play single notes. Okay, and that gives it a different expression. So try everything, try to change one thing at a time and see what works for you. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is from Leo Kotke's The Ice Fields. Um, the first exercise is the intro and the second exercise would be the main riff. Um, the difference between the two is astronomical because for the first one you only need to work on your sensitivity, it's a sensitivity exercise, while the second one is a whole finger style riff. So it goes like this. Okay, I'm gonna play both. This takes a lot of concentration and sensitivity because it looks easy, but it really, really isn't. Uh, you're playing two completely different parts with your fingers and with the thumb. Um, you're expressing completely different things. So the main riff, you put on E minor and you play strings six, five, four, six, five, four, five, and then on the E bass string, you bend three but you bend it just a little, okay? Just a little. And that's the basis for the riff. Okay, and you palm mute it. Now, after you've played this twice, you add this. 
okay? You pick the first and second strings with every bass note. Now, you want to play them very, very delicately. Okay, now you want to concentrate on your thumb um, and have such a dynamic as bum, bum, bang, dum, dum, dang, dum, dum. Okay, the D string should be a bit stronger than the rest. Okay, now this is a lot harder than it looks to achieve uh, in a right mindset. You need to be really, really concentrated, really, really calm when you play. It's a really great sensitivity exercise. Um, now, once you got that down, um, you start the second riff, okay? That's the, that's the first uh, riff out of the two and our second exercise. And I suggest you really sit on that for a couple of days until you really feel confident in playing. Okay, and you wanna play that four times. Then uh, you want to play the E minor with these two fingers because now you add three on the E string and again you want to be as comfortable as possible. And now the riff starts like this. Okay? The uh, first and second strings um, you play it the same way, you just... Okay? Um, the first and second strings uh, along with each bass note. The bass notes this time are okay, strings six, five, four, six, five. And then immediately you change into D over F sharp. It's a D chord with F sharp on the bass with your thumb, two on the sixth string. And then you do this. Okay? You play the first and second strings with strings six, five, and four, but when you play the fourth string, you play the open E string, so it's a D sus two. Okay, so you get this. And then you put on two and two on strings three and four while leaving three on the second string. So you have three, two, and two on strings two, three, and four. This is A sus four. And um, it's A sus four over E because we'll be playing the E bass string as well. And now you play this. Okay, our last lick of uh, this riff. It's, um, let's work on the high notes first. You play the second and third strings five times, and then two and two on these strings, and then zero and two, A sus two, and then the third string by itself. Okay, so again. Now when you play the, D, uh, the A sus four, you can play the E string with it. And then play the A and then the A sus2 with strings 2 and 3 alone. Okay, now let's add the bass notes. It's, it's strings 6, 5, 4, 6, 5, 4, 5, 5. Six, five, four, six, five, four, five, five. It's strings five, five when you do the sus two thing. Okay? So together, E minor with three on the E string. D over F sharp. D sus uh, two. A sus four. time. Okay, it sounds really strange when it's not um, in real feel, in the original feel of the song. 
And don't forget, you're playing open strings, the high strings, and you're muting the bass notes all the time. And you want it to be very, very delicate, very hypnotic even, if you concentrate enough. loop it around and have a lot of fun with this I promise you it's different than anything else you've played just like Leo Kotke is different than any other guitar player who ever lived um, this is a terrific sensitivity and dynamic building exercise you won't regret playing it now for the fourth exercise now uh, you know Asturias <laughs> that one by Albanese. So I've taken that and turned it into a Metallica-esque kind of intro thing uh, just for us to practice on and have something to, um, to serve as an exercise. So it sounds something like this. <laughs> It's seven on the A string, and then you pick strings one and then two, so you have this. Then it's nine on the fourth string, and then strings one and two again. Then ten on the fourth string, and then strings one and two again. Then seven on the fourth string, and then strings one and two again. So it's... Okay, seven, nine, ten, seven, with strings one and two in between them. And then it's nine on the fourth string again, but then you only play the first string. And then ten on the fifth string, and then the first string. So it's... And you want to play... Uh, the, f uh, the seventh fret with your first finger, the ninth fret with your third finger, and the tenth fret with your pinky. That way, the hand doesn't have to move anywhere. Okay, that's the first of the two legs. Okay, got it? Seven, one, two, nine, one, two, ten, one, two, seven, one, two, nine. After you loop it around as much as you want, uh, the second riff is this. 7 on the 6th string, then 1, 2, 9 on the 5th string, then 1, 2, 10 on the 4th string, and then 1, 2, 7 on the 4th, and then 1, 2, and then 8 on the 4th string, and then the 1st string only, and then 9 on the 4th string, and then the 1st string only. Okay, so you have four bass notes with strings one and two, and then two bass notes with the first string alone. So... Or, in the right uh, rhythmic context... So there you have it, the Metallica-esque Asturias redoing.
Okay, if you want to speed it up a little, it sounds even better. Um, so that's uh, the lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, or even half as much as I did. I really had a blast. Um, so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons already on the channel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's a free guitar channel. So uh, go download the tab from the website. The link is in the description of the video. The tab is for free as well. Everything on Lickin' Riff is for free, but if you want to give something back, anyway there's a large blue donation button right above the tab everything goes right back into lick and riff into your guitar education into allowing me to make time uh, to work on these lessons to film them edit them upload them everything takes time and work so if you want to help out I'd be more than grateful and I thank you in advance for your help you go practice this have fun get it under your fingers and I'll see you next lesson bye for now thanks for watching